We will end this week outside the studio. The Bosque del Apache National Wildlife Refuge is known as a place to watch sandhill cranes, geese, and other wildlife. It was created in the 1930s, and managers have since returned to landscape to a condition more similar to the time before dams were installed along the Rio Grande. It takes a lot of work behind the scenes to maintain a habitat to support all those animals. Correspondent Laura Pascas takes us there this month for Our Land, our monthly coverage of environmental issues in New Mexico. The best time of year to visit Bosque del Apache is in the winter, when thousands of cranes add white to a landscape that doesn't see much snow this time of year. Hi, Kevin. Hey, Laura. Welcome to Bosque del Apache. Come on in. Thank Kevin you. Cobble is the manager of the National Wildlife Refuge. Welcome to our visitor center. This time of year, who's coming to visit? We get people from all over the United States and all over the world. This place is world renowned for the birds during the winter time. Visitors can travel along two loops that cover 12 miles and offer spots to stop, take pictures, and wait for wildlife. The south loop is more marsh type habitats and on the north loop is where we have our farm. And so that tends to be where most people go. They really like the farm because when we, we provide corn for the cranes in the real cold parts of the winter, they'll be up in the corn feeding pretty heavily. So that's where most people like to go see the large concentrations. You can see four or 5,000 birds in one place. The greater sandhill cranes spend the summers and have their young up around the Yellowstone area in Idaho, Wyoming. The bulk of them stop here in the middle Rio Grande Valley now, and so we provide that resting habitat and the food to get them through the winter in good shape for the next year. The refuge has a farm that grows corn to feed the birds. That's to keep the birds from traveling outside the refuge and feeding on local crops on private land. And Cobble says the design of the ponds where geese and cranes gather to feed is also intentional. We try to manipulate our wetlands to simulate what the Rio Grande used to do. So you would get a big flood of water in the spring when the snow melt came and the river would change channels and it would scour areas along here and then it would drop down and then you'd get a lot of native plants growing up in the wet areas. Then you get the monsoons that would come in and reflood a lot of those areas so it'd keep it wet and then it would dry out or, or some of them would stay wet into the fall. So since we have dams on the river and it doesn't act that way anymore, what we come in and we, we do it mechanically with tractors and discs and plows, we'll disturb in the spring or fall and then we manage the water to flood it and then drain it slowly to get the right suite of plants to come up. And then in the fall, we have all this native vegetation. Between our corn crop and then what we grow here, we, we provide a pretty complete diet for all the birds. So what we have over here is uh, about 30 to 40,000 snow geese on one of our wetland units. When they're sitting like this, if a bald eagle flies over, the whole 30,000 of them will get up and fly around. They're just a big, like a tornado. There they go, there's a few of them anyway. Along with helping ensure the birds have enough to eat, refuge managers are helping adapt the landscape to a warming climate. They're already seeing the impacts of higher temperatures in the West. Last year, a lot of the geese, they never left Montana because Montana didn't get cold enough. It didn't freeze over and push them down here. So a lot of, some of the birds now are stopping in Colorado and spending the winter in Colorado when historically they never used to do that. The refuge is an important source of economic activity for the mostly rural Socorro and Sierra counties. About 25 people are employed there right now, and each year thousands of visitors attend the Festival of the Cranes, and the refuge estimates that event contributes about $2 million into the local economy. But Cobble says it's difficult to put a price tag on the value of the refuge. There's a value that we don't understand yet, 
and we may never understand it. But there's also a lot of people, you know, once again, as a, you know, there's people that can do without wildlife and those that can't. And, and there's an awful lot of people that can't do without. I mean, it's, it's something that, that we evolved with. And it's, to me, it's the sound of a crane is such an ancient call and what, you know, that, that we should preserve that forever for, our, for generations to come. For New Mexico in Focus and Our Land, I'm Laura Paskus.